Good evening. My name is Josh Travers. I'm the assistant field manager for the Red Rock Canyon in Sloan Field Office. Welcome uh, to the Red Rock Canyon Business Plan Modification Public Meeting. Next slide. Uh, tonight, um, the, the purpose of the meeting is to provide uh, a, a presentation and, and clarity uh, to uh, the, the project uh, that we're, we're working on and, and to provide a period for uh, public comment. Um, be, before we, we get started in, into the presentation, I, I want to share that there's multiple ways to, to provide comments um, outside of this meeting. Uh, so th there will be an opportunity during this meeting to provide public comment, uh, but we will also accept uh, public comment through the email that you see listed uh, here. And this email will be provided uh, a couple times throughout the, the presentation. Um, also, uh, we, we will accept uh, comments uh, mailed to the BLM through uh, the, the address that's provided here on this slide and, and will be shown again later in the, in the presentation. Uh, the, the agenda for tonight is um, I'll spend about 30 minutes um, providing an overview of, of the project and, and the work that, that we're proposing. Uh, there will be a, a 15 minute period for uh, any, any questions that, that may exist. Um, and uh, and then we'll go straight into into comments. And um, during the the question, when we open up for for questions, uh, I, I will ask that folks uh, not use the chat for questions, but use uh, the the question and answers uh, button on on the the bottom of your screen uh, to to ask those questions. Once we once we open up the the fifteen minute period for. For questions. Um, be, before we we get started, we've got um, we, we've got several folks that are that are um, that have, are helping with this meeting. I've got John, John Aslan, the BLM uh, Public Affairs Officer, who will co-facilitate this meeting with me. Uh, Katrina Williams, uh, Shidra, uh, Rake Straw, Boris Poff. Uh, and, and then we've had some additional resources that have helped in the background in, in uh, providing support to, to these meetings. And that's Park Rangers, uh, Yezu Wang, Michelle Matthews, uh, and our outdoor recreation planner, John Prescott. Um, uh, before I, I dive into the project, I, I want to give a, a quick overview of uh, Red Rock Canyon National Conservation Area. Um, we're 201,000 acres managed by the Bureau of Land Management, uh, and, and the National Conservation Area is part of the National Conservation Land System. Uh, the, the, those systems or, or the, the lands that are within the National Conservation Land System are, um, are, are congressionally designated. Uh, Red Rock Canyon has been designated as a National Conservation Area. Uh, many people uh, uh, refer to Red Rock as, as being a national park or even a, a local or, or city park. Um, but, but it's important to remember that we, we are part of the congressionally designated national conservation system um, as a national conservation area. Um, and within our legislation, our highest priority is given to conservation and, and resource protection. Um, following resource protection, we, we manage for sustainable outdoor recreation opportunities that meet conservation objectives. Uh, Red Rock Canyon uh, is the busiest national conservation area in the country. Uh, we, we receive visitation from international visitors and, 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 and millions of people coming from across the nation every year. Um, uh, Shadra, do, do you mind playing the, the video for me? Um, back in, in 2016, uh, Red Rock Canyon hit um, sub, um, huge milestone, uh, huge records in, in visitation where um, we, we broke 2 million visitors. And um, at that time, we, we thought that was a peak volumes that, that we would see. And, um, and, and we're looking at, at how we can best manage uh, this kind of uh, visitation. Uh, the video that we're playing for you right now um, was taken uh, pre-reservation -re uh, system 
uh, back um, in, in early 2019. Um, uh, following 2016, when we broke 2 million visitors, um, fast forward to 2019, uh, we, we broke 3.5 million visitors. Uh, and, and this year, uh, it, 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 we're, we're seeing record numbers where we believe we're going we're gonna, to uh, surpass 4 million uh, visitors. Um, and, and trending uh, to 5 million visitors by the end of 2024. Uh, th those are um, unprecedented numbers for Red Rock Canyon uh, and a lot of pressure on, on a relatively small, small area. A lot of that visitation is, is going to the Red Rock Canyon Scenic Drive uh, and Calico Basin uh, and, and the Cottonwood Valley area, um, but, but we're also seeing visitation increase in, in other outlying areas. Um, uh, in 2020, Red Rock Canyon implemented a, a reservation system. Um, th that system addressed multiple problems that we were receiving from, from high levels of visitation. Uh, first and, and foremost, there was um, substantial safety, health and safety issues. Uh, Red Rock and in our emergency, our supporting emergency service agencies we're not able to respond to uh, emergency needs uh, around the scenic drive. Uh, and, and we were not able to respond to uh, search and rescue in incidents timely or, or sometimes effectively because of, of traffic congestion in, in parking areas. Um, secondary, we, we, there was substan substantial resource impacts were happening uh, across the NCA. Um, but, but especially in around the Cena Drive, where we were seeing the, these peak peak volumes, um, and then and then the visitor, you know, we we did multiple studies and uh, we were receiving uh, a lot of feedback about uh, a negative experience, um, visitor experience, and and the impacts that were were happening to uh, the, the enjoyment that, that that people were were not getting when they would visit Red Rock Canyon. So um, in, in 2020, we, we implemented a, a reservation system. That reservation system did um, um, come with, with a, a, a fee to, to a, a $2 um, a charge if you made a reservation online or if you called one of the, the, the phone representatives, it was a, a $3 uh, fee to make that reservation. Um, uh, early this year, Red Rock Canyon, um, th there was a judgment made where Red Rock Canyon uh, was um, asked to consider that we were told to consider that 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 fee as a um, uh, as a recreation fee, and and so uh, part of the process that we're we're going through now is is considering that fee as as a recreation fee. And uh, and seeking public comment on on adding that fee to to the Red Rock Canyon um, fees, which I'll talk about more in, in, in a few minutes. Um, but but I, I just want to make sure that that that's clear on on why we're going to where we're going. Um, next slide, please. Um, I, I also want to share um, Red Rock Canyon in, in in the law that created Red Rock Canyon National Conservation Area. Uh, under the, the limits on, on visitation um, uh, section, uh, it, it does state that the secretary may limit visitation and use of the conservation area, area um, when, when, where the secretary finds appropriate for the protection of resources. And, 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 so, and so we, we are bringing a reservation system and, and going to continue to maintain a reservation system to Red Rock Canyon. Uh, what we're asking for public comment on is is Red Rock um, uh, m moving to uh, to add the 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 fee uh, to to make a reservation to to our 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 uh, standard amenity fee program. Next slide. Um, so, so again, um, tonight I'll be pre I'm presenting on on the business plan modifications and what we're doing. Uh, the, the four main bullet points that um, that that we are that that we're addressing in, in modifying the business plan 
are uh, we're we're expanding the amenity fee for the Red Rock Canyon National Conservation Area Scenic Drive, so that that fee includes the cost uh, associated with the Recreation.gov reservation fee. Um, Red Rock Canyon also uses the reservation system um, at the Red Rock Campground. Uh, we're, we're proposing to expand the amenity fee for the Red Rock Canyon Campground so that uh, that fee includes the, right, the, the, the fee that's associated with the recreation.gov reservation service fee. Uh, we, um, in, in the business plan that was finalized in 2018, uh, we did make the decision to bring fees into uh, the, the Calico Basin uh, core fee area. And, and when we um, made that decision in 2018, it, it did not include, um, or, or it, it stated the, that when we referred to Calico Basin, we used uh, the, the titles Calico Basin, Red Springs, Red Springs Boardwalk and Picnic Area, um, as you know, we, we use that, all three of those names loosely throughout the document. And uh, we're, present, we're proposing to present to the Resource Advisory C Committee um, to, to bring clarity to that name and, and to change wherever we, we, we were not consistent in the name to, to always use Calco Basin Core Fee Area. Um, to, to bring clarity into the business plan. And then finally, we're, we're adding an expanded amenity fee for the Calico Basin core area uh, that's equal to the associated recreation.gov res reservation service fee. So I, again, um, we're, we're not in, in this proposal and, 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 and in modifying the, the business plan, we, we made the decision to, to bring fees into Calico Basin back in 2018. Um, we, we did present that to the public uh, three times in 2017, um, where, where that decision was made, um, the final decision was made in 2018. Um, and today we are, we're asking uh, for your support uh, in, in increasing our fees in, on the Scenic Drive, Calico Basin Core fee area, and, um, and at, at, our, at our campground. Um, that, that supports using the reservation system. Uh, the table in front of you shows uh, where, where we're, we're adding fees. So, so in today, where a vehicle, as, as one example, where a vehicle is charged $15 for entry, uh, we're asking that we expand that fee $2 uh, to support an online or on-site reservation, or uh, $3 if, if someone were to uh, call recreation.gov uh, over the phone and using their, their toll-free number uh, to make a reservation over, over the phone. I, I also want to, to make clear that um, back in 2018 at that final decision uh, where we increased the fees back in 2018 um, on the Red Rock Canyon Scenic Drive, uh, we, we, uh, we also, uh, that, that, that business plan supported an increase in, in uh, uh, fiscal year, or, sorry, Jan January 1st, 2023, uh, to increase our, our fees, which you see in green on this table. So, so where, where a vehicle is $15 in 2023, uh, $15 becomes a, a $20 entry fee. Uh, and and, and a, we would be including we'd be asking that we're including an online or on-site or phone reservation fee in addition to that, that increase that you see in 2023. Um, on, on the bottom, the, the campground, it, 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 it's the, the, the same table. Um, it just supports the campground where, where to make a reservation for a campsite, uh, the online or on-site fee is $8 and a phone reservation is $9. Next slide, please. Um, and in, in addition to the fee increases, uh, we we you know, where we we used uh, a variety of different names where we discussed uh, the Calco Basin area. We're, we're we're also bringing clarification into the business plan, um, and and wherever we state 
any of the different names of the Calco Basin used for the, the name, the Calco Basin area, we're, we're, we're modifying that to, to state that it's the Calco Basin core fee area for consistency and, and, and to support a plan that was finalized uh, earlier this year, just th this last month, uh, to support the, the Calco Basin Recreation Area Management Plan and the language that we used in that plan. Next slide. Uh, the, the process uh, for, for this project is we, we first <laughs> briefed our, um, our state director and uh, the BLM headquarters. We, uh, we then moved to um, developing a proposal and we presented that to our state office and, and headquarters and have them, we had them review the proposal. And, and now we're, we're holding two public meetings, one last night in person and then tonight a virtual meeting. Um, where um, following this, we'll, we'll present uh, to our resource ad advisory council and ask for a, a recommendation to go to our state director for a final review and uh, approval of the amendment. Um, Red Rock Canyon um, is, is allowed to charge fees under uh, FLORIA or the Federal Lands Recreation Enhancement Act. Um, and, and that allows us to collect and retain revenue. Uh, all of the money that, that we collect at Red Rock Canyon stays at Red Rock Canyon. And, and there's multiple ways that we're authorized to use that. Uh, we use fee dollars for repair, maintenance, and enhancements of our, our facilities that support uh, visitor access, enjoyment, health and safety, and, um, and, and the places that you love most and, and enjoy. It, it helps us maintain that stuff. It helps us build it, um, and it, it really supports uh, the development out here. Uh, we, we, it's used for habitat restoration, uh, law enforcement uh, related to public use and recreation, uh, direct operation and capital costs. Uh, it, it helps us manage agreements with gateway communities and organizations that, that help us provide additional public services. And, um, and it help, uh, helps us manage uh, agreements with organizations that provide um, search and rescue and, and emergency services out here at Red Rock. Um, over the last five years, uh, what we display here is what we've collected in fees. Um, in 2020, uh, Red Rock Canyon um, uh, was, was forced um, to, to go into a three-month closure due to COVID-19. Uh, we saw a, a substantial loss in, in revenue in, in 2020, and that's, that's why you see that. Um, that, that dip there. And, and both the Scenic Drive and Calico Basin um, were, were closed for about a three month period. Um, but, um, but collectively, out, out of all of the fees that we've spent, uh, we spent, uh, we spent approximately 36% uh, on operations, 64% uh, on labor, and 14% on grants and agreements. And um, uh, th those percentages uh, do exceed uh, 100% of the fees that we've collected, and, and that's because it costs the federal government uh, a lot more than, than what we collect in fees to, to manage Red Rock Canyon. Um, and, and that's why we're, we're asking you know, for, for continued to support in, in, in allowing us to have the tools um, to, to, to run this and, and to be able to um, to, to continue to maintain and, and operate Red Rock Canyon. Um, there's, there's, uh, uh, we, we get a lot of, we, we've heard a lot of feedback, feedback, excuse me, uh, on, um, on, on how fees, uh, don't support underserved communities and, and I, I, I want to share that Red Rock Canyon partners with a, a variety of organizations for, for outreach and the development of programming um, that, that really focuses on, on, on serving underserved communities. And, and there's a, a variety of examples that I can provide you, but I, I, I certainly want to share that we're, this is a, 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 a 
an, an area that we want to grow in, in, in the programs that we offer and and expand. And, and we know that there's individuals out there and organizations out there that can help us provide a lot of uh, support in, in ensuring that that we continue to to um, to provide services for for underserved communities or access to underserved communities um, so that they can continue to access uh, Red Rock Canyon. Um, some of the ways that we do that now is we work very closely with Friends of Red Rock Canyon, um, who's offered well over 300 grants uh, to underserved schools uh, that needed uh, transportation assistance on, on coming out to Red Rock Canyon. And, and those, those have always come to the Scenic Drive or in Calico Basin, and, and, and we continue to, to run that program that way for, for Title I schools. Um, Friends, both Friends of Red Rock Canyon and Southern Nevada Conservancy author youth programming and, and field trips to underserved youth at both Red Rock Canyon Scenic Loop and within the Calico Basin core area. Um, uh, the Southern Nevada Conservancy offers hikes and other recreational activities and opportunities to anyone interested in, in uh, participating in those programs. And um, the majority of those programs are are, are held within the Calico Basin and, and Scenic Drive areas. Um, and, then, and then finally, Southern Nevada Conservancy uh, uh, and um, Get Outdoors Nevada and, and the SNAP team um, offer uh, field trips, interpretation, educational programming to underserved audiences at Red Rock uh, Scenic Loop and Calico Basin. And, and those are for audiences of all ages. Um, and uh, Southern Nevada Conservancy and um, BLM Education Interpretive Staff, we, we focus on Title I schools where you know, this last year and over the last couple of years, we've given out hundreds of, of um, Every Kid Outdoor um, passes to Title I schools, uh, fourth grade students um, that, that don't only give those students access, but it gives those uh, students and their family access for the entire year um, to, to uh, the, the fee area of Red Rock Canyon. Um, and, and again, I, I, I just want to, to remind folks that, that if there's opportunities out there that we're, that we're missing, uh, we want to work with organizations and, and partners that that, that can help us and provide to, to communities that, that may not have opportunities to come out to, to Red Rock if, if we don't offer that kind of programming. And, and we're, we're open to those conversations. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, I talked a lot about what fee dollars support. Um, you know, we, you know we, we've had some, some partner support in, in funding some of our projects, but, but we do spend, <clears throat> some of our operation costs on, on planning. Um, an example is where, you know, we, we had a, a, a catastrophic fire come through the Harris Spring area. It opened up the area widely um, and uh, unmanaged recreation occurred, uh, causing uh, impacts at a scale that was um, very difficult to, um, to, to bring to repair. And, and fee dollars have supported a plan that, that we, we, we've already started doing a lot of work to, to bring restoration uh, for, but, but also how we're gonna manage recreation in there. Uh, we continue to do that in Cottonwood Valley and, um, and we just completed the, the Calico Basin uh, Recreation Area Management Plan that, that did that very similar work. Um, th we've got the Red Spring Boardwalk um, in, in the Calco Basin area. It's a million dollar boardwalk, just under a million dollar boardwalk for the construction and, and, and installation. Um, even though we, we did a lot of work to, to um, Im improve the boardwalk from its, um, its, its prior condition and, 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 and to set it up to, to live in the desert for a long time, it does cost a lot of money to maintain this thing. And, um, and, and fee dollars provide a tremendous amount of support for us to, to not only have this asset out there um, that protects some pretty incredible resources in, in the meadow that, that it protects, but it also allows us to continue to maintain uh, the, the boardwalk. Um, we were, we're at 95% design of the, the fee booth 
uh, entry uh, area of the scenic drive where we're going to be adding a fourth lane and a bike lane um, to the entrance of the scenic drive. Um, there's there's uh, a lot of enhancements that's coming there um, where we're bringing some some improved technology into this area, uh, but also um, in the in the, the bottom most part where you see the arrows in in the diagram here. Uh, we are the the rideshare program that comes out to to uh, Red Rock Canyon is increasing every year, and uh, we're going to have a rideshare drop off here to to help folks um, get get in and out um, uh, when when doing rideshare. Um, also, this there's an opportunity here uh, for us to consider um, public transportation, a, a bus stop perhaps um, in in the future. Um, we've done scenic drive uh, parking improvements, and um, we have projects that are um, shelf ready, meaning uh, we've we've done analysis and the planning and design work um, to continue to improve uh, scenic drive parking areas with um, the reservation system and a lot of data that we've collected since implementation of the reservation system. We believe uh, that there are areas that can su sustain additional parking or, or some parking lot improvements um, so that we can we can bring more people into Red Rock Canyon um, and, and, su and support it in a sustainable way. Um, we, we've got projects that are, are, are ready to go and, and we are um, using you know, fee dollars and, and additional dollars to support that kind of construction. Um, we've We've done a lot of work to brand Red Rock Canyon, and um, it really shows in signage uh, throughout the entire NCA. We, you can see these signs everywhere. Um, if you frequent Red Rock, you probably see these out there everywhere. It's, um, uh, it, it's a, a great asset. It, we've seen substantial improvements to search and rescue efforts. Uh, or, or to, you know, to, to, to lessen search and rescue efforts, I should say. Um, where um, you know, we, we've done a lot of work to improve our signage, but also um, have, have signs that really um, represent Red Rock Canyon in, in a, a, a really neat way. You know, it's, you know, fee dollars um, have, in, we, this year we've, we've, we have filled a, a number of park ranger positions. We have uh, more park rangers on board than we ever have in the past. Um, this year we have the most, and um, I, we, we've received a lot of feedback that um, that the public has not uh, seen the presence of BLM out there. Um, that's now changing. Um, there's we, we've got we've got a substantial number of of folks that are out on the ground every day of the week. Uh, and, and representing Red Rock and, and helping um, in the management of, of Red Rock. But, you know, as, as these pictures show it also, you know, we, we put a lot of, of care in, into Red Rock and making sure that the resources stay um, to, to stay in, in their original form. And, 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 and that's either through signing or, or uh, restoration work or or un unfortunately, uh, the growing problem of graffiti in the conservation area, we're, we're really trying to get ahead of that and, and address some of those issues. And uh, finally, um, uh, you know, that this certainly isn't all the projects and, and the work that we've got going on at Red Rock Canyon, but, um, but a major highlight is, is the Red Rock Canyon Legacy Trail. Um, a very small portion of fee dollars is going into this project, but we're very proud of this project. It, it's um, a um, collectively, it, it's a hundred million dollar project um, that that um, is supported by federal highways and and outsourced money in in the design, the planning, and and construction of it. But but Red Rock Canyon has invested a small portion of of fee dollars. In, into getting these projects started and in supporting finding the funding so that we can build and, and have these um, as an asset um, to, to provide more access to, to Red Rock Canyon. Um, that's um, that's the, the end of my presentation. And um, 
uh, we're, we're going to prepare to to open up to uh, a question and, and answer period and i'm going to hand it over to john who's going to assist me in in facilitating the question and answers thanks josh okay so the slide around right now we're not to that yet we're at questions and answers right now we don't have a slide for that so if you um uh I, I see some people have already put questions in there if you go on your screen and you hover over the bottom of your window there there's a q a icon and if you click on that q a icon that'll bring up a box and you can uh type in your questions there and uh josh will then uh, go through there and try to answer as many as he can uh, before we have to get into uh, public comment so uh we'll be here for a little bit and then we'll we'll roll into the public comment period and i'll be back to uh to talk to you then so uh josh gonna hand it back over to you Great, thanks, thanks, John. And I've got um, Boris Poff, who is the Red Rock Canyon National Conservation Area Manager, uh, with me, who's going to filter uh, questions, uh, read them out loud, and then I'll I'll provide answers to those questions. So the the, the first question is from Peter Foley, and he wants to know the photos that were shown earlier that showed the um, the congestion. How typical were those prior to the reservation system? Yeah, prior to to the reservation system during our, our peak season, which in, in 2019, Red Rock's peak season grew um, to be fall, winter, and and spring. That, that that's the period where we're, we're the most heavily used. Uh, the uh, the the video that you saw was taken on a weekend. Um, that that was a typical weekend at, at Red Rock Canyon, but we often saw uh, congestion similar to that. On, on Fridays through through Mondays. Uh, however, uh, on on holidays and and during peak months such as uh, March and April and October and November, it was common uh, that that we would see um, substantial congestion uh, that, that like similar to what you saw in the photos on um, th throughout the the week, and, and and that's during during peak use seasons. Uh, Lisa Kirby wants to know if there are any uh, plans or investments um, <clears throat> to be made at Calico Basin prior to um, putting in a, a fee station, such as additional amenities or education. Yeah, that, that's a great question. And in, in our direction um, that, that we provided in the, the Calico Basin um, Recreation Area Management Plan, uh, the, the process that we're following is is we wanted to to clarify the language and in, in which we're presenting to you today um, on, on the the different the different um, titles that that we used for for Calico Basin, uh, but in addition to that, uh, we we are um, looking at 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 providing more amenities in into the Calico Basin area before we we go to fee to a, a fee collection system. Um, in addition to that, um, you know that the Cal the Calco Basin Recreation Area Management Plan um, uh, su suggests the installation of a, of a gate, and 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 the mention of that gate is strictly giving us the ability to collect fees. Um, when when we have eight hundred to eight hundred thousand to a million people um, going into an area like Calico Basin. Uh, the we we have to have a, a funnel that, that allows us to to ensure compliance and, and to ensure that 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 we've got a system that that we're set up for success to collect fees and and that and and as mentioned in in that plan uh, we we after after making the decision of how we're going to collect fees at Calico Basin which is which is that that booth fee booth type system once we get get that planned and designed what we'll look at construction so so to be very clear um we, we won't be collecting fees for for at least several more years in, in the calico basin area uh because of our commitment to to add amenities to that area but also to plan design and construct a fee booth um kioni onsaka wants to know Will these underserved communities still have to pay the reservation fee through Red Dog Golf if they get free entrance passes? Yeah, yeah. So, so if if a, a Red Rock Canyon 
annual pass or in America, the beautiful pass um, it is purchased, uh, the, the, the fee that will have to be paid is, is the $2 reservation fee if, if this proposal goes all the way through. And, 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 I, and, and that's, that's a great question. And I, I just want to remind folks that, you know, as we use a, a reservation system, I, I'm going to use the $15 entry fee as an example that we have right now. We're, we're asking for your support in helping us best manage Red Rock. And, and, that's, and, and that's when you come to Red Rock, support us in, in, in this ask to, to increase the, the reservation fee by, by the, the cost that recreation.gov charges. Um, otherwise, we will have to use, um, the, out of the $15, we're gonna, Red Rock Canyon will use $2 of the 15 to, to, to pay for that reservation system, which will further hurt us in, 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 in our ability to manage Red Rock at, at the capacity that we're currently trying to manage it. And, and it's also important to, to remember that as visitation continues to increase, the cost to maintain Red Rock um, increases. And, um, and, and so, and, and, then, and then the cost of, of, of inflation <laughs> has also increased. And, and, and all of that plays a toll on our ability to manage, manage Red Rock Canyon. Um, and Peter Foley wants to know what kind of uh, trails or amenities are available for people who uh, use the ride share? Sorry, say that. Can we ask the question one more time? Yeah. What what uh, uh, trails and, and amenities are available for people who use the ride share? The, the, the folks who use the ride share, they that we have a, a trail network that starts at the fee booth, it goes up to the visitor center, and then we have the Mo and Kopi Trail. The majority of ride share visitors. Um, are, are folks who who first want to go to the visitor center that that's really it, it's a lot of tourists that are using that service and and they they spend their time at the visitor center and then they go and and, and hike to the Moenkopi trail um, however we, we've seen some changes through covid where where we're, we're seeing a lot of rideshare users um, go to calico one um, the, the the biggest and most substantial parking lot that provides access to um, to the most prominent red rock in, in sandstone in, in Red Rock Canyon. Okay, uh, John Lodtrick uh, wants to know, have you reached out to Native American community about these fees? Yes, we, um, we, we have, we, we work very closely with, with our, our, our tribal partners and and, and they're involved in, in all of the projects that we do at Red Rock Canyon, not, not just fees, but all of the planning work, all of um, um, the, the construction work or, or, or project work that, that we're working on that uh, whether it, it's, and a lot of times it even involves maintenance uh, where, where they're involved in, 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 in all of the work that we do. Okay, uh, Stefani Don wants to know, if the fees for Red Springs were approved back in 2018, why haven't you tried to implement smaller, more targeted progressive fees like parking lots? Yeah, and implementing, um, uh, implementing fees is in, in a place like Calico Basin, it, it, it's a very, it, it, it requires a lot of planning and, and a lot of work. And, and, and we, we did get it approved um, to, to bring fees in, into, into Calico Basin, but but we knew that it would require a, 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 a substantial system to, to, to manage that. And, and as we continue to look at, at different systems and, and other locations that, that are using fee collection systems, it, it, took a lot, it took time for us to get to a place where, where we, we made that decision. Uh, we also knew that we were gonna be providing a, um, site-specific recreation management direction for Calico Basin. And it made the most sense that we would go to developing an implementation system when we do that planning work, which, which we, you know, even though the business plan determined that we are gonna collect fees in, in, in Calico Basin, the recreation area management plan gave us direction on how we're gonna go about collecting those fees. 
Um, did you reach out to the Southern Nevada Climbing Coalition um, on the plan? We've we've had uh, yeah so so yes we we have had multiple conversations with the Southern Nevada uh, Climbing Coalition uh, re regarding uh, the Calico Basin Recreation Area Management Plan. In fact, I, I personally um, had uh, multiple conversations with uh, the Southern Nevada Climbing Coalition. Um, then uh, John Lautrick wants to know. Have other BLM lands asked for fee increases? Yes, and in fact, um, all of uh, BLM's uh, recreation, or sorry, all of uh, BLM, yeah, re recreation business plans uh, that are that are out there are are public documents, and if if you do a a search for um, uh, for a BLM and business plan. Uh, you can you can find um, all kinds of business plans that are out there that um, provide information on on the, the fees that the different recreation sites are collecting. Uh, next question, also from John Roderick: uh, Do you receive any state money? State money. Um, state of Nevada. Um, um, we we do we we have not partnered with with the the state at this time. Um, that they've not been. Um, um, I, 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 I guess. I mean, we, we work with state programs like um, like grant. You know, we work with partners who get um, grants from state initiated problems, but or problems, state initiated um, uh, grant programs. Um, but but I, I think I think the money that we've received from all of those programs are come from. Uh, federal agencies. Um, if if that's if that's a question that you want, you know, more details on, I, I I would ask that you you through that email address that you ask that question if you want more information and 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 I can I'd, I'd be glad to provide some some additional um, comments to that. Um, Stefani Don wants to know. Do you really feel that a fee equivalent to the loop is merited for the basin? It is a much smaller area. Um, yeah, the, the, the investment um, that, that, we're, that BLM is putting into Calico Basin is, is equal. It, the, 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 scale, the, the scale of the area, you know, you know Calico Basin, the, the, the recreation, Area is approximately it's just over five thousand acres, and 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 the scenic drive provides access to um, to a lot more acreage. But but the the, the banishment is is very specific to to trails, um, seven parking lots, and um, and, um, and 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 the area is managed collectively. It, it's it's an area that. That, that we deploy a lot of resources to that that both work this the scenic drive and Calico Basin and then the, the investments that we're putting into into Calico Basin when, when there's you know a, a boardwalk and and we're looking at the improvements in in other parking lots there, there are substantial investments that we're looking at in in both areas and and yes I I, I do think that there's that, that you can easily justify. Uh, the, the cost of the amenity fee for for both areas. Um, it, it, it's important to to to, to note that um, your your fee receipts, like if you were to enter Calico Basin and and you pay your amenity fee there, that amenity fee holds true if you want to come into the scenic drive on the same day. The, the the important planning piece that you'll have to do is make sure that that if if we have a reservation system in Calico Basin, that 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 you you have a, a reservation system and, and you've planned to have to, to meet the times of your reservation for Calico Basin and, and when you want to enter the scenic drive, that you've planned for that accordingly. But outside of that, fees apply the fee that you pay to get into Calico Basin also applies to the scenic drive. Okay, one last question. Have you considered partnering with MGM or Caesars for partnership and sponsorships? They are heavily invested in the Las Vegas community, and Red Rock is an asset to everyone. Yeah, that, that, that's that's 
that's a, a great idea. Um, that we would probably rely on on some of our partner organizations to build those relationships. Um, the federal government works works closely with all organizations, but but we're also we're very careful on on the the partnerships that we make and 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 how how we can get and how we can receive money and 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 those kind of partnerships are are typically done through some of our uh, organizations that we work very closely with but but that's i mean great idea and, and great questions and 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 something that certainly our i hope our partners consider in the future <laughs> um I, we're we're out of time, and um, we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna hand this um, back to John Aslan, who's gonna facilitate us through our commenting period. Um, but I want to say thank you to all for asking those questions. Your questions are, are really important for the commenting period, and and I I appreciate you helping me make clear what questions are out there so that you can make um, the best comments and. And and I and I you know I don't want to take anything away from John John's piece of the presentation, but you know he'll talk about substantive comments. But please consider um, you know in you know we we are asking for your support in 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 the fee increases, but also in your comments. Please share with us. You know I I, I shared a collective of of photos and, and things that, that on, on how we spend your fee dollars, it's really important to us to, to, that you share with us how you would like to see your fee dollars spent so that we can continue to provide um, needed access and, and the amenities and, and the things that, that and the services that, that, that provide um, a great experience out at Red Rock Canyon. So with that, I'll, I'll hand it over to, to John Aslan. Okay, thank you. We're going to move into the public comment period uh, here. Um, providing substantive comments, um, you know, what really helps here is providing new information about the proposed action, um, you know, alternative or analysis, that sort of thing, or identify a different way to meet the need. Really, um, for an example, back, back in 2017, when we did these meetings for the, the business plan, the original business plan, we did receive um, uh, quite a few comments about uh, improvements that people would like to see at Red Rock Canyon. And those included uh, better signage, especially going up uh, Turtle Head Peak, uh, and then also uh, uh, a lane at the fee gates that would allow people with passes to be able to get in their own lane and be able to get through much faster than those who were you know, waiting in line, waiting in line to pay. And uh, both of those things uh, were considered and actually that signage has gone up as you've seen the pictures and the trail going up to, to uh, Turtlehead Peak is much easier to follow now with those signs. And then also that, uh, that fast pass lane as people like to call it, uh, we are in the, uh, uh, the environmental analysis uh, process right now for that project. So that is going forward. In fact, that's in public comment right now. Uh, for that and a few other infrastructure improvements over at the fee station. So your comments here on, on, on you know, amenities that you would like to see over at Red Rock Canyon, they really make a difference. They, they do end up you know, being, being considered. And right there is an example of two, and there are many more uh, that uh, have come to fruition. So I just, I just wanted to, to bring that up for when you do your comment to you know, kind of think on that side and on, on things that would really, uh, that you'd like to see over at Red Rock Canyon. Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, um, for, for if you wanna provide a comment, uh, just down at the bottom, there's a little raise hand icon. If you click on that raise hand icon, uh, then I'll know that you'd like to make a comment. Um, once I uh, call your name, then I'll give you the ability to unmute. I'll let you know, and then just unmute yourself. Uh, you'll have a two minute period to, uh, to provide your comment. Uh, after we get through uh, all the, the people who have raised their hands, uh, I'll, I'll do one more call for those who haven't provided comment if they wanna to continue to provide comment, or if someone would like to provide comment who hasn't provided comment yet. All these uh, will be uh, recorded and will be included in the project record and considered. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? So the timer will be displayed on your screen and so the time, please be respectful to others and try not to go over your time. 
Uh, next slide, please. Um, most importantly here, um, please be respectful to others. Uh, everyone gets their chance to, uh, to do comments here, so please be respectful to others. And also refrain from profanity. Uh, if, uh, if you're to violate either one of these, I'm, I'm afraid I'll have to mute you, and I don't want to do that. So uh, I, th I think we can all get together, get along together here and, and, and do that. So let's go first with Dr. Pete Foley. Okay, you are able to unmute yourself now. Please go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I strongly object to both the reservation fee and the new fee in Calico Basin. So you, I'm afraid you don't have my support, but I think you know that. Um, my, my main comment is around socioeconomic and environmental justice. And you know, given the unique location accessibility of, of Calico Basin to Las Vegas, I think it's really important that a quality assessment of the impact of these changes on low income and minority visitors is carried out. Um, and the demographic information about visitors to Calico in particular that's in your current uh, assessment is from a study from 1992. So it's 30 years out of date and clearly that's completely inadequate, especially given your premise that uses, usage has changed over um, the, the recent years. Um, and furthermore, the report doesn't allow us to compare alignable estimates of the economic status of visitors to Calico um, with um, the actual economic status of average people in or typical people in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, it does look from the data you've given that um, a lot of people who visit Calico are low income, but that's because the two pieces of information are, are not um, from the same time scales. So, but it does re reinforce the concern that fencing off Calico and charging a $20 plus entrance fee will disproportionately and negatively impact low income Clark County residents. And at a time when we're all facing high inflation economic challenges, um, that, that's, that's unacceptable. And at the minimum, the BLM needs to accumulate additional information on how serious the impact will be on economically challenged residents of these proposals and how that impacts the recreation, mental health and, uh, and such like. So thank you. Thank you for your comment. Is there anyone else who would just go ahead and raise your hand? Okay, we're gonna go next to Gabriel Lewis. Okay, you can unmute yourself now. Hi, thank you for um, hosting this and um, listening, maybe listening to what we say. Uh, I'm Gabriel Lewis, I'm a local rock climber, I'm a climate scientist and I live right next to Red Rock. So I probably recreate in Red Rock a hundred days a year. Um, it's in my backyard. I'm fortunate to live here. I think it's the best or maybe the only good part of living in Las Vegas. And I have watched my access to Red Rock crumble um, over the years. I've lived here for several years, recreated here for about a decade. And I've been attending these meetings for several years, uh, both in person and over Zoom. And I know BLM is legally obligated to ask for public comments, but it does not seem that the BLM, specifically Josh Travers, has listened to a single comment that has been raised in these meetings. Um, I'm heavily involved with the Southern Nevada Climate Coalition, and I think I can speak for them, speak for myself, that we are adamantly opposed to gating off Calico, adamantly opposed to the $2 access fee, which does not go to Red Rock, although Red Rock does need the money, but that $2 goes to Booz Allen, uh, they build bombs, they drop bombs on Syria, bad news. Uh, but it would be great to just have that $2 access fee for the reservations only in periods where it's really needed. Um, I'm there a lot of Wednesday afternoons and there's no line and that $2 is still getting funneled out of Red Rock and getting pushed into Washington DC. And if you hike around Red Rock, the trails are crumbling, there's dog poop everywhere, there's graffiti everywhere. And the only people that I have seen actively trying to improve Red Rock are those involved with the Climbing Coalition. So big applause to them, but it would be great to see BLM actually doing something to improve the climbing and the trails and the signage and the garbage um, that I pretty much see every day that I'm in Red Rock and it's disappointing. So thank you.
Okay, thank you. Uh, next, um, boy, uh, I apologize if I pronounce your name uh, incorrectly. Uh, Stefani Dawn, you are, you can now unmute yourself. Hi, it's uh, Stephanie Dawn, thank you. Um, I'm a member of the board of directors for the Southern Nevada Climbers Coalition. I'm responsible for our social media. And as a result, I read comments on our posts as well as receive direct messages from our community members. Um, submitting my personal comments about this, but also sharing perspectives that I receive through various social media platforms. Um, so I'm going to be talking about optics, and this is particularly regarding the Calico Basin. The other things that you guys want to raise fees for, we don't have objections to. Um, this is Calico Basin. And um, I want to say that optics are very important in federal relationships with the public and in developing or destroying trust. And um, there's a number of things that have been done in this process from beginning to end that are destroying the trust. Uh, for example, you state that you're doing this to protect natural resources. You're implementing these fees and gonna put up this gate, but that's actually pretty ridiculous. If you are considering natural resources, I don't think you'd be taking this action. You're gonna be forcing taxpayer community members out to other free areas of the park where there is zero infrastructure to support them. Why would you push more people into more sensitive areas of the park like First Creek and Oak Creek? There's protected wildlife there, bighorn sheep, there's undisturbed soil with crypt healthy cryptobiotic colonies. And Calico Basin is an urban park. It's equipped to handle it. It's surrounded by homes with more and more homes encroaching. And these environmental impacts can be better managed with ranger enforcement and education, but you're making zero effort to take these actions. I also want to comment that um, I know that uh, Mr. Travers commented that he's been in communication with the SNCC. I think he talked with our president a little bit last night, but we continually are sideswiped by the things that the BLM is doing. And we have monthly standing meetings with the BLM and we continue to be sideswiped by this. So these listening sessions have been perfunctory and there's so much more you could be doing to protect our environment and access. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else, uh, if you could raise your hand, who would like to provide comment? Anybody? For those of you who can't find it, if you, if you hover over the bottom of your page, there's a, 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 Dr. Foley, I'm sorry, you've already provided a comment. I'm looking for folks who have not provided comment yet. There's, if you hover down at the bottom, there's a little thing that says raise hand, an icon, if you're interested in providing a comment. Okay, we have some. So Rick, Rick Momsen, you can unmute yourself now. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Oh, okay, we got a echo in here. Okay, we're good. Um, Let's see, the, uh, I'm definitely against um, the Calico plan uh, to putting up fee stations. The sudden reservation system in the loop caused a violent shift of traffic over to Calico Basin. There was no thought, no preparation for this, and now you're in a knee-jerk reaction to do the same thing. We have not seen any planning on how you're going to handle the next violent shift over to the remaining free access areas like First Creek. On the topic of planning, the previous slide said you're providing substantive comp comments, you know, recommending that we provide alternative methodologies for the ramp and uh, environmental impact analysis. That's your job. That's part of an impact analysis that you're supposed to provide. Why are we not seeing this? And why are we getting, you know, requests from you for us to provide that? And you don't even listen to it after we do provide it. Is there anything else? No, that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. So is there anyone else who has not had an opportunity to uh, provide comment? Just raise your hand.
Okay, we. John, I, I'm sorry, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name because I know I'll mess it up. But you, you can, uh, you can unmute yourself now. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm kind of on the outside of this. I visit Red Rocks occasionally, but um, the folks there at the managing land agency, the BLM there, it sounds like you have a lot of angry people out there with a lot of angry comments. You need to engage those local folks better. Listen to them, understand what they're saying, and find some kind of common ground. I I mean, I, I haven't heard one good comment yet. The answers you gave to the uh, written questions were were fine, but if you have local folks there that are that angry and that upset, you need to reassess your local engagement and you need to talk to those folks one-on-one -on -one or whatever you need to do, but it needs to be different than what you're doing now because you should not have all that all that uh, animosity out there with your local partners. Just just an FYI and a, a, a view from the next state over. <laughs> Do a better job, please. Our public lands deserve it. And, and you guys should work closer together and, and you know be focused in a common direction and I understand what the BLM is trying to do and I understand what local folks want to do there's got to be a common ground there you cannot be at odds like that and get get things done and and in a positive way um, you're never going to make everyone happy but all those comments sound sound pretty negative thank you Thank you. We still have time for more comments. We're, we're only taking additional comments from folks who haven't had an opportunity to comment yet. If you'd like to provide more comment, um, you can email in a comment or you can mail it in. We'll have that slide at the end as well. Um, but for the public comment right now, we're uh, just taking folks who have not had an opportunity to comment yet. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, Lisa, if uh, you could unmute yourself, you're available. You are open now. All right. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I'm just going to build on what everyone else has said. Uh, obviously, I strongly oppose the fee um, being imposed on Calico Basin. And I mean, I think anyone can see the impact that um, gating the loop had on Calico when it was first imposed during COVID and seeing that little or no investment was made into BLM enforcement on the use of the trails and the parking where it got so bad that even the residents were putting rocks into the road to keep people from parking you know, blocking their driveways, which I think is totally reasonable from their perspective, but simply due to the fact that for the people using the area for recreation, as well as the residents there are being negatively impacted by these insanely high percentage usage of this area, but very little effort has been done from the BLM to do exactly what you say needs to be done to educate people on using trails appropriately and to put the resources out there to keep people from, you know, using the outdoors as their restroom and to enforce the parking and make sure people aren't 
you know, using the, the space in a negative way that then is going to subsequently cause everyone to lose access to the area. And I don't understand why that is falling onto the shoulders of us, the user base, who seem to be doing the most to try and mitigate all of the negative impacts that continue to occur because of the negligence of the BLM to, you know, do their part in protecting the area. You know, providing all these resources of signage, etc., is only part of the is only part way to solving the issue. But you need someone out there, you know, helping those people understand and enforcing those things if you really want change to take hold. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Is there anyone else? Anyone else who hasn't have not, hadn't had, had, uh, hasn't provided comment yet? Would like to provide comment? Caitlin. Caitlin, you can now unmute yourself and provide your comment. Hi, uh, I'm actually, uh, my name is Ben Lawrence. I'm here with Caitlin. We logged in together. Um, yeah, it was very sad to see uh, the proposal for fees. I definitely strongly object. Um, I think it's a very important resource for people of lesser means uh, to enjoy nature, to um, become fit and healthy and uh, live a healthy lifestyle. I really love to see uh, so many young people out there who, um, you know, they've left the video games. Uh, they're, not, they're not going to the strip. They're, they're out there exercising, uh, they're eating healthy so they can send their climbs. They're picking up litter. Um, they care about the environment. What, what a great way for our youth to live. We should encourage that. And it's just heartbreaking to see um, the fees are being imposed. You know, it's, it doesn't, the fees for myself aren't such a big deal, but I do know a lot of people uh, for whom it is a big deal. For me, I, the opening hours are the biggest deal. I just think it's ludicrous to, um, to close off nature early. Um, but an additional problem with the fees is that it's really a gateway. And we'll see with inflation that if they're imposed, they'll just keep ticking up, ticking up year after year no more services will be provided. We don't see any rangers there now. You know, uh, we got plenty of volunteers to do the work. I just really think that um, this is a hasty money grab. Uh, it's really disgusting to me. And we've got a host of volunteers willing to do the work. Other options should be looked at. Last time I was on one of these calls, it was mentioned that, um, you know, it's, it's really much like um, the loop and um, the loop, the loop is, is terrible. Um, it was also mentioned, I mean, the, the restrictive practices in the loop is terrible. It was also mentioned that if people don't want the fees, they can go further down the road. Well, at First Creek Canyon, I saw now they're, they're closing that early as well. I mean, it's just, it's a patch of dirt on the side of the road. How, Gated communities have longer opening hours than 8 p.m. You can street park in gated communities past 8 p.m. It's just a very restrictive practice. Imposing fees and restricting opening hours is, is frankly disgusting. And we should really reach out to the community to seek better solutions. Thank you. So uh, one more last call for folks who haven't had an opportunity to provide comment yet. And then we have some extra time. So we'll go back and answer some more questions. Is there anyone else who'd like to provide comment who hasn't provided comment yet? Uh, 
Okay, um, we're going to go answer some more questions that uh, went up in the Q&A box, uh, since we have some time here. And uh, um, so I'm going to hand it back to Josh. And then also, we, we have the, the screen up here that it shows if you want to provide any more comment, uh, you can either email it or you can uh, mail it. And then uh, also, uh, um, if you have any additional questions, you can also email to that email address. All right, Josh. Yeah, th th thanks, John. And, and before I, I dive into questions, I, you know, I, I think it's important to, um, to share um, a, a little bit about about some of the work that we're continuing to do. You know, we we, we Red Rock Indian sees and and understands that um, that we've got millions of people trying to come into Calico Basin and the Scenic Drive um, as our primary areas. Now, and we do see an increase in visitation happening across the NCA from our northern border to to the southern border, but but we know. And, and acknowledge that that the, you know everyone believes that the access is at um, Calico Basin and, and the Scenic Drive, and um, it, it's important to acknowledge that there's 201,000 acres of DNCA, Calico Basin, and um, uh, that the Scenic Drive uh, provides access in, in the in the accessible areas. Unless you go to the far back country areas, you're looking at 20% of the NCA when you're when you're in Calico Basin or the Scenic Drive. There's there's 80% of an NCA that's that's accessible, and and we're doing a lot of work in working with. Our our um, our local communities, um, both Summerlin and uh, the city of Las Vegas, in in ensuring you know we're, we're watching development happen all the way up to our eastern border, and um, and and as we've heard comments that that that's of great concern to to our visiting public, um, and 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 the, and when those concerns come up, we hear that, and and we're doing a lot of work to get in front of our local governments. And we're, we're working with the city of Las Vegas in both Summerlin. Uh, we've, we've, we've done a lot of work to build partnerships and relationships with them. Uh, we are securing access um, in, within, within the Howard Hughes uh, boundaries and, and also along our Eastern boundary uh, in, in collaboration with the, the city of Las Vegas. We're, we're securing locations in areas where we we want to plan to have uh, more access, more development, and more areas for people to get into Red Rock Canyon. And and there's, you know, th th those. It, it takes a lot of time and, and a lot of of work to to start to to build those relationships and and to secure that access because, you know, what we're we're asking for 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 some really big asks. And and some of that is is to change how zoning works and, and to change some of the master planning that, that's been done for the city of Las Vegas to ensure that, that as development continues to happen, especially on the Western part of Las Vegas, that, that we've secured access. And, and we've got commitments from both Summerlin and Las Vegas to, to ensure that we do that and, and work working together on, on multiple projects to, to bring that access into the NCA. And so I and, and I just I, I just want to point out that you know we've started there. It, it's a priority for us, and and we're looking to the, the northern part of the NCA and down in the Calco Basin area, which is the entire southern portion. You know the, the planning area for uh, sorry for um, for Cottonwood Valley, and um, and and we're looking at at how we can ensure that there's there's. Uh, sustainable and inefficient access there for 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 our pop growing population. Boris, did, did, uh, while I was um, talking, any any new questions come in? Um, <clears throat> no, but there's some other questions. Oh. Um, for example, um, has a consideration been made for flat fee for regular golf fees instead of a per transaction fee? Yeah, that uh, BLM doesn't have any control over the the fee that that Recreation.gov charges. So Recreation.gov is um, is is managed by an outsourced um, organization. Uh, they, um, you know, in the contract that they have with um, all of the federal agencies, there's there's one contract um, that that covers the agreement to run Recreation.gov for for multiple federal agencies, and within that contract, it gives them the authorization to charge fees. 
Uh, those fees cover services like every time a credit card is ran through the recreation.gov service, there, there's a there's credit card, there, there's there's charges for using credit cards, transaction fees. Um, but also, you know, to use a reservation system um, uh, similar to what, what uh, th that recreation.gov uses, it's far more complex than a reservation system that you would see or if you were to call up and make a reservation at your favorite restaurant, or or you you make a reservation at, at your hairstylist, those reservation systems are very simple, and and they don't perform. Per, there's there's nothing. Those services don't don't provide anything like um, what what has to happen when when you manage a reservation system such as to support boat launches, campgrounds, picnic areas, day use areas. Or, or wherever you're making a, a reservation, there, there's a lot of complexities behind that system in, in managing those. If I, I, I will I will state if if you know the, the BLM doesn't create that kind of technology, but if the federal government was to provide that, the the cost of taxpayer dollars to support that system would be far greater than what Recreation.gov is is charging. Another question from John Roderick. Uh, is there staff on 24 hours? Uh, at Red Rock Indian staff? So we, we have uh, uh, BLM law enforcement that, that works 24-hour uh, uh, shifts. Uh, so, so there's, there's always um, th there's always folks that are, that are around managing BLM managed lands. Um, Red Rock Canyon, uh, we, we, we have the staff to cover a bare minimum shift at, at Red Rock Canyon, and, and, and that covers us through, through the, the day use hours that we've established in our core, our core area. But, um, but outside of, of our, our day use hours that, that we have seasonally, we do not have uh, staff, uh, park rangers or outdoor rec planners or, or additional positions that would support a, a full 24-7 shift. Um, Rick Monson wants to know, where is the Calico pool fee area terminology used in the 2018 plan? Yeah, so, so that's, that's so, so as, as I explained um, earlier in the presentation, we, we used the, the, the terminology Calico Basin, Red Spring, Red Spring Boardwalk and Picnic Area, and and Red Springs. And there's there's multiple uses of of those those words. That the modification to the business plan is is the terminology that we used in the Calico Basin Recreation Area Management Plan, and, and that's so, so that we bring consistency into the business plan that that also supports the um, the, the Recreation Area Management Plan by using. Calico Basin core fee area. We have a slightly longer question from Lisa Kirby. She says, uh, you mentioned that there are BLM rangers on the ground. And while that may be true in the canyon, I have never seen enforcement performed in Calico Basin on trail use and parking enforcement most weekends, peak days and times. Why are there not rangers currently monitoring these areas to mitigate overuse impacts in real time? Yeah, well, I, I we we have seven we seven days a week we have park rangers on staff and and they're they're managing um, they're they're managing the scenic drive Calico Basin that 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 is the concentration especially on on weekends but we also have two hundred one thousand acres that we're managing and and we did we 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 are committed to deploy resources to those areas um, again our our number one mandate and. And to remind folks, we're not a park. We're, we're a national conservation area um, with a priority to protect resources, uh, followed by sustainable recreation management. And, and in doing that, uh, we, we deploy resources across the entire NCA, not just to support recreation that's happening on the scenic drive in Calico Basin, but to ensure that we're, we're managing the entire NCA from the top to the bottom. Another question from Rick Monson. Will the gates be open access after hours like Joshua Tree National Park or will they be locked down for non-residents? Yeah, so uh, that's a great question. And 
And we, we've established the direction for how we're going to go about collecting fees. However, that, that does require that we develop an operation plan and, and we, we don't have that operation plan written. Um, but, but I will state that we, we, we are building the, what, what's referred to as a gate or a fee boost station to collect fees. Um, we, the, the plan is that, that that fee booth is to, to funnel traffic through Calico Basin and give us the means to collect fees. Um, after, after day use hours that's established in that area, the, the, day, the, the day use hours applies to the developed recreation sites themselves. It's, it's where we have facilities, it's restrooms, it's, um, it, it's, it's the parking lots, it, it's where we've had after hour challenges mat managing things that, that shouldn't be happening in those parking lots. The developed rec sites are closing after, after our, our day use hours. Um, the, the fee booth gate, you, the, the community, the public, everyone will be allowed to drive through that gate, um, that the streets will be open for public parking. And if there's a trail that you want to access, a bouldering area or a favorite climb, you have to do that. We, we're going to ask that, that, that the, the developed recreation sites, uh, that, 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 the, that the closure that, that, that happens at each developed recreation site, that, that people respect that. And, and as long as that can happen, and as long as we don't have substantial vandalism or, or other issues, I, the, the intent is, is day use hours applied to the developed rec sites themselves. Here's a question from Keoni Wansaka. What fees are Calico residents expected to pay? The, the fee that, so, so Calico Basin residents that, that want to use the recreation site, they, they need to pay the same fees that everyone else pays. And, and th th there's gonna be some challenges in that. I mean, there's obvious challenges in how, in how we're gonna go about managing that. Um, how about doing something about the break-ins in cars that occur in craft every single week? Where are the rangers then? Any plans to address this? Yeah, we 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 are addressing it. Um, we we know that there's been break-ins at at in, in the Calico Basin area. We also have break-ins all along State Route 159. Uh, we also have break-ins around the Scenic Drive and um, working very closely with. With Metro in, in some locations, but also our own our own law enforcement, uh, we're doing a lot of work uh, to try to get ahead of that. I, I can't speak to any of the investigative type of work that we're doing, uh, but there's a lot happening, and um, and and we're aware that that we've had some problems, and 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 it's we're it's being looked into. Uh, another question from Stefani Don: How are you going to protect First Creek and Oak Creek when people head over there? Um, we've we've got some some great plans for uh, State Route 159. Um, you know, we we've got four four phases of uh, the Red Rock Canyon Legacy Trail. Um, three of them are fully funded at um, just over sixty million dollars. Um, that that's funding that project, and 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 again, that's that's federal highways, uh, Nevada Department of Transportation, uh, Clark County funding. That that's all supporting. Um, the the planning uh, design and and construction of this trail um, and and Snipama. Um, BLM has outsourced has been a, has been successful in outsourcing funding to to support the planning and design and construction. We have one last and final project that's pending with Snipama. That's the the final thirty five million dollars to complete the legacy trail, um, and and that final project includes seven substantial trailhead improvement projects where we would uh, be looking at every trailhead on State Route 159 and in fact considering um, a few additional uh, where we'll, we'll bring in parking, um, uh, improved ingress and egress um, on, on 159 um, and, and, and facilities to, that further support not, not only the legacy trail, but the connecting trails that the legacy trail will connect into. So, so one last question, a follow-up question from Keoli Onsaka. Uh, 
So Calico Basin residents will pay fees at the proposed fee station located at June's Trail? Yeah, the, the, the planning and design of the FIBU station for Calico Basin is yet to be determined. Um, we're, we're, we're looking at, 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 look at, at, at the funding that, that's going to support the planning and design of, of that fee booth um, now. But, but, um, but be, before, that, before we dive into that, we're, as, as I mentioned earlier, we're also, we are also looking at, at modifying the language um, that we used in, in the business plan. Um, followed by some um, improvements that we want to bring into Calico Basin uh, that 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 show that we're we're investing into that further investing into the Calico Basin area before we we make the final move to collect fees and and build the the fee station. So th there there's some work that we're doing prior to to implementing fee collections on the ground. And, and we're multiple years um, away from that. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I, we're, we're right at, at the end. And I'm, I, I just want everyone to know, I, I really appreciate you participating in tonight's meeting. I appreciate the comments uh, made. Um, and, and I especially appreciate the questions. If you have more questions or, or want to make a comment, please um, please e email them to us at the email address that you see here on, on the, the screen or, um, or, or mail them to uh, the address that you have um, that, that, that's on the slide in front of you. Um, your comments are, are, are really important to us. Uh, we will collect these comments. We will... Um, look at them collectively, and and we will bring them into uh, our our presentation as as we move forward um, in, in the process uh, for uh, th through this process. And and um, I, I I again just want to thank you all for participating. I hope everyone has a good night. Thank you.